Okay, so now let's talk about vector addition, the next vector operation. So unlike scalar multiplication, when we took a scalar and a vector and operated together, here we're going to actually just take two vectors, two like things, and add them. So let's label everything here. So let's say we have two vectors u and v, and just to make things nice and efficient, we'll say they're both two-dimensional vectors. And We'll label their components so we can define things. So I'll say that vector u is uh, a1, b1, and vector v is a2, b2. Okay, so the first question is then, how do I add vectors algebraically? It's rather intuitive. We're simply just gonna add the vectors component-wise. So what I mean by that is if we have u again as a1, b1, and v is a2, b2, when I add the vectors together, I add them component-wise, so the new x component is going to be a1 plus a2, and the new y component of this resultant vector will be b1 plus b2. That is it. And a nice aspect of this definition is that it extends for a higher dimensional vector. So if u and v, for instance, were in R3, I would add the components together respectively to get the resultant vector for vector addition or any higher dimension for that matter. Let's just see a quick, quick example with some numbers just to make that nice and clear. So if we have the vector u, let's call it 1, 2, and the vector v, let's call it 2, 0. If I then wanted to add these two vectors together, I add them component-wise, so I got 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 0 is 2. There is my resultant vector, u plus v. Okay, so to make this idea of vector addition in algebraic sense, connect well with a geometric interpretation. Let's draw geometric picture of vector addition as well. If I have my vector u, okay, let's draw it like this. Let's say there's the vector u, 1, 2, approximately. And the vector v, notice it's just a horizontal vector. Well, notice I can place v anywhere I want in the plane. The way we defined vector addition in a geometric sense is you align the vectors head to tail, head to tail in order. So I'm going to align these with u first and then v. And the resultant vector, when I add these together, has initial point with, that aligns with the initial point of the first vector u and terminal point that aligns with the terminal point of the second vector v. So in other words, that vector in blue is my resultant vector, geometrically, u plus v. Addition has a really nice property that the order doesn't matter. So 1 plus 2 is the same as 2 plus 1, for instance, right? Well, that property extends for vectors. So in other words, u plus v is equal to v plus u in the opposite order. This property is known as the commutative property of vector addition. In other words, the order in which I add the vectors does not matter. And why is that true? Well, in a basic sense, this property is inherited from the fact that when I add real numbers together, the order doesn't matter. So that's a nice property that we should also see reflected geometrically. So how would I then write v plus u? Well, I arrange the vectors geometrically, head to tail, head to tail, now starting with v. So if you remember v, I can draw the equivalent vector 2, 0 anywhere in the plane as long as it has the same direction and magnitude. So let's see that. Let's draw v here. So let's say there's my vector v, and then I'm going to add to that the vector u here, which I've also translated. So as we can see, v plus u, by definition geometrically, it has initial point at the beginning vector, v, and terminal point at the end vector, which is now u. And of course, yes, we get the same resultant vector. Now this nice picture is sometimes called the parallelogram law of vector addition. In other words, if I draw a parallelogram uh, using vectors u and v as the outer edges, the long diagonal of that parallelogram represents the sum of the two vectors, u plus v.